Hey everyone, Eric here and welcome back to another World Conqueror 2 video. So in this video, we are in fact doing the battle of Kursk over here as the Germans. So as you guys know, in the Allied campaign, we are able to play as the Soviets in this exact same mission. But using the magic of multiplayer, we are in fact able to play as the Germans over here. So let's get started. And yeah, let's just resume the game over here and let's see what this game has in store for us over here and yeah so uh, right now the soviets are actually assaulting uh, the units that we would be in control of if we are playing the actual mission but this is not this is in fact the multiplayer mode and yeah so we occupy the south over here and Goering over here occupies the north and yeah, so looking at our situation over here, we are kind of stuck between two advancing Soviet armies here. We've got Zhukov in the north and we've got Rokossovsky in the south. And yeah, so we are going to use our rocket launcher here and we want to take out the most powerful uh, enemy units that, they, uh, that the Soviets actually have. So yeah, and we're going to move this heavy tank uh, there to basically better defend against the better units of the Soviets because they have a rocket launcher here, a tank and a heavy tank all attacking Kiev which is definitely not something that we can underestimate that's for sure and we are going to uh, attack this rocket launcher a little bit and basically what we want to do is we want to weaken this rocket launcher because it can also attack our forces in Kiev which is yeah not good and yeah so we are going to use this artillery over here and bombard that armored car uh, move this guy up here and yeah basically tank some hits for the artillery and yeah okay let's leave these guys over here in kiev and we're gonna buy an infantry unit so uh, we're gonna move this infantry unit up to attack that rocket launcher we want to weaken it a little bit more and that will make sure that uh, that rocket launcher won't deal as much damage and yeah so that will help our forces better defend kiev over here and to make sure that the soviet attack is really blunted over here we are going to use our armored car and attack so that heavy tank is now reduced to half health which means it can't really do a lot of things and we're gonna end the turn over here we've got a relatively okay defensive position over here given that we have entrenchments and whatnot and right now Rokossovsky is moving towards us which is of course once again not exactly the best thing we want but it is fine we can definitely deal with Rokossovsky with the help of the Romanians here so uh, Drukov over there uh, in the north has got a really terrifying army they've got a lot of tanks a lot of armored cars and mechanized units and whatnot and yeah that is something that we actually have to take note of in uh, this particular scenario over here uh, we're gonna move this tank over and okay we won't be able to finish off that artillery but artillery uh, I meant rocket launcher yep and over here we are going to in fact take uh, Astana over here which Fun fact, it was renamed to uh, Nur Sultan. Uh, it is the current capital of Kazakhstan, if I remember correctly, which is some fun fact if you guys didn't know. And yeah, so we are in fact going to move our heavy tank uh, down over here and we're going to attack that artillery. And we want to ensure that artillery over there is sufficiently weakened. And yeah. So we are going to just finish off that rocket launcher there and then we are going to move this guy back to Kiev uh, use the heavy tank to attack the tank and yeah we're going to we're going to leave the heavy tank on top there uh, we don't want them to take out our armored car and yeah so okay we have managed to draw away Rokossovsky which is great because uh, that way the Soviet formations in uh, the front directly facing us is not that strong defensively and that will mean that we can basically cut through them and take a whole bunch of territory and that way we can hopefully pincer Rokossovsky and yeah we're at round three right now 
so once again, uh, we're going to move this rocket launcher up over here uh, in preparation to basically bombard Rokosovsky over here and we're going to use the tank, get rid of the armoured car and move back and then we are going to destroy that rocket launcher capture the industry over there and yeah, we're going to leave these forces in Kiev once again, we need them sufficiently healed up and whatnot. And I know that I have a heavy tank over, over here in this city, which I have not really moved. And we are going to move him right now. So we're going to move this guy over here to capture the airport and make sure that uh, the Soviets can't try anything funny. And uh, we are going to... I think moving that rocket launcher may have been a bad idea over here. Uh, we're going to move this guy up there because Rokosovsky is going to attack that city. And subsequently, that would mean that uh, we will have to move this infantry over here. Uh, get another infantry unit there. And let's see over here. Uh, let's... Let's just do our thing and capture that city. And that will basically annoy the... Uh, the, the the Soviets because that would mean that they have less income for the round and uh, we are doing a commander versus commander battle over here and we are in fact going to have the advantage although our health may not be looking good right now we can use uh, we can use ace forces and yeah we're currently at round four and already things are starting to look a little bit different over here and we can move this guy forwards to attack the artillery. I keep calling the rocket launcher the artillery, not sure why. Uh, we're going to advance up with our heavy tank. And we've also got uh, these guys trying to flank around. As well as Drukov advancing towards Minsk, which we also have to take note of. And yeah, that is something that I don't particularly like. But that will mean that they are leaving Moscow undefended which is a great opportunity for us to, in fact, do a lot of damage by capturing Moscow. And right now, we have successfully dealt with Rokosovsky over here. And we are going to capture uh, this city over here, which is a level 3 city. Definitely not something to be ignored. And we're going to take that city relatively easily. And yeah, so we're going to stop here. And that is because Rokosovsky actually controls this part, which means uh, the forces in Moscow cannot actually get to us. And that is definitely a good thing for us right now because we don't want them to pour in reinforcements from Moscow. Uh, that will really pin our forces into a, uh, into a really bad uh, defensive position over here because uh, right now we are the advancing a party over here and we definitely do not want to uh, get ourselves annihilated while we are attacking and our forces are all spread out but anyways we have managed to take uh, Moscow which is definitely good and we are going to capture that industry and that city as well so uh, that will mean that the Soviets cannot spawn anything from the back to try and take Moscow uh, they, they only have one option really which is to move Drukov back or buy some units from this industry to attack us but we've got a lot of forces in Moscow so that doesn't really help over here uh, we're, going to, we're just going to do our thing get some territory over here and we're going to start to bombard uh, Ashtana over here which once again has been renamed to Nurse Sultan apparently and we're going to capture that city which is great for us uh, let's send our heavy tank back to uh, Kiev over here to heal up and in the next turn, we should be able to use a supply line over here to heal all of our forces in Kiev up, which will be a significant boost to our capability to wage war over here. Okay, so Drukov have captured Minsk. Not much of a big deal, to be honest with you. And uh, we are oh we don't have enough for an airstrike over here, so we're going to start to move our uh, forces out here to in fact uh, attack Drukov. Right now, Drukov has got the advantage, and that is because uh, Drukov is in the city, which provides with uh, a little bit of 
healing abilities, which is definitely not great for us. Not great news right there. And yeah, so we're going to move all of our forces north now that uh, the Soviet forces in the south are basically defeated and whatnot. And we are in fact going to turn Moscow over here into an industry. And we might be able to use some rocket launchers if we want to. Yeah, so we're going to move that guy there, capture the industry, and we're going to start to move all out over here. We want to take that rocket launcher out. The rocket launcher is a tremendous support unit right here, and it can deal out a lot of damage if we ignore it. So we definitely want to keep it in check over here. And yeah, the Soviets also know what we are trying to do. So they've put a defend up over there, which... Yeah, okay. That's good enough. And... Okay, we're, we're basically dealt with the artillery over there. And what we can do now is we can use an airstrike to basically attack Drukov before we use our tanks. And yeah, okay, Drukov is almost dead right now and we've received minimal damage, which is great. Yeah, whatever, I don't really care. Yep, and... There we go. So uh, we have effectively broken the back of the Red Army over here. And we're going to move this rocket launcher there to basically bombard Minsk in the next turn. Although I doubt that would be necessary. And yeah, so uh, the remnants of the Soviets, uh, they are going to try and struggle a little bit. But we are eventually going to defeat them because we have captured all of their major industrial centers over here and that will mean that they have number one they have no income number two they have nowhere to spawn units essentially and yeah that is a huge problem for them to deal with and we're going to put an airport over here and we're going to end the turn and now Goering is not going to pursue our units which is fine because uh, we're just going to use an airborne infantry and we're going to drop behind enemy lines over here and we're going to move this heavy tank up to block that tank and yeah okay pretty cool and then we are going to okay let's build a city over here one two three and another city over here and that will mean that we can basically capture the northern parts of the map uh, really efficiently as well. So we've captured the industry and it looks like we are unable to take out that tank. And yeah, it looks like I've overestimated the capabilities of our infantry units and they are pretty weak uh, given that they are, uh, they, they, have, they are level zero and they have no attack or defend art over here. So yeah, they're really weak, uh, like they can barely withstand a strike from the enemy. Uh, yeah, but anyways, we are actually able to get the W over here. And we're just going to capture the remaining territories held by the Soviets. And there we have it, we have the W in the Battle of Kursk as the Germans over here. And we've successfully managed to get a 5 star victory because we've completed this in round 10 but anyways hope you guys have enjoyed this video if you did please do leave a like in the uh, down below and if you are new to this channel don't hesitate to click that subscribe button as well but that's it from me for the time being thanks for watching have a great day and of course goodbye